Right, not when it comes to the Libby. We're going to get loads of more money, but we're not going to be able to spend it at Kempton. Um, because the bookmakers have lost. Um, the levy's going to be changed. Uh, those offshore bookies who bet online haven't been paying a, anything at all unless they're authorised betting partners, in which they have been paying a little bit. Um, they're going to pay 10% of their gross profits from April the 1st. You have to laugh slightly about the date. Um, Chris, this obviously is good news for racing, but as I said to Simon Clare yesterday, bookmakers do not give 40 million quid away. Somehow that money is going to be regurgitated in the system. It could be, as I was saying to Simon yesterday, that a 5-2 to two shot now becomes a 9-4 to four shot in 12 months' time. Who knows how they're going to do it? But in general terms for racing, getting money out of those horrible bookmakers has to be a good thing, doesn't it? Well, we all have limited tolerance for discussing the levy. It's not a fascinating subject, but surely in a generation's time, that's the biggest news of the week, Yeah. not Kempton. It's, um, I've, I don't know who to credit um, for this. Is it the government? Is it Mick Rust and his team? Um, it's a massively important achievement for racing. Um, I, we did feel the, the horse had bolted, didn't we, with the, the, the offshore turnover. And I, I don't have any grasp of the technicalities of it, of how it's become within the reach of, tax, uh, mm. of, 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 of a kind of fundraising jurisdiction. I just don't know how it previously wasn't possible. Yeah, and now well, it is. Yeah. And so it's important that all parties now um, can find a way of, of, of making this workable. As you say, that's, it's got to be workable for punters because um, it, it's a pure market forces situation, isn't it? They, they still need to be profitable, but they can only be profitable if punters feel they're getting value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, the, um, it basically came about, and what, what the, you know, the, this is the culmination of, of, of the racing lobby of Parliament, which 20 years ago was, you know, uh, not working uh, when the bookmakers' own lobby was very strong, but on this occasion, racing, uh, with the BHA involved, but by no means making all the running, has managed to persuade Parliament that this this leakage of levy because of the offshore loophole uh, needed to be closed, uh, and there was a bit of symmetry because the government itself was losing its own tax on, on, through, through these offshore platforms, and, and it basically captured that. Uh, a year or so ago, this is the subject of a legal challenge from bookmakers, and I wouldn't be surprised if another legal challenge is coming over this particular levy deal. Uh, but some imp important people in racing have been lobbying government on this, and mm. there's no doubt. I mean, Tracy Crouch, the Minister for Sport, uh, made reference to it. Uh, uh, you know, racing has played the card that it's a major employer, one of the country's largest employers, hundreds of thousands of people being employed, and the government has actually listened uh, and is going to introduce this legislation April the 1st. It's, it's, it's a foolish date to try to aspire to, to introduce it because uh, it has to go through the state aid process in Europe yet. There may well be legal well, challenges from the bookmakers. I don't, and think that will, that, I don't think that will retard the start of it. I think that kept that. No, but you know, it, it's not to say, I mean, we've basically seen this process take one small step at a time over a considerable but amount of time, and this is another one. one. But there are still. So it's going to take longer than more. Brexit or shorter than Brexit? Who knows, but, Matt? Nothing to do with Levy this. exit. But well, the Brexit obviously has an issue as well yeah. because yeah. because the state aid issue with the European Parliament won't apply once Britain is out of the of, of the EU. But the date is um, in tablets of stone. I don't think that can be changed. I mean, the date well, can, is can, tomorrow. Can they organise it? You know, in time to actually start introducing it on yeah. April the first. It, it seems a little bit ambitious, but let's not Who? deny that it's a very welcome uh, uh, boost for racing's finances. Yes. Who decides? where that money is spent? To be decided, Matt, I think. How about? Does Another racing body decide as a body? Uh, a, a, a body, is uh, some committee is going to be set up. Um, the money, I think, is going to go to the Gambling Commission, and then a racing body or a trust of some kind is going to decide how to administer it. So here's a um, suggestion. Out the blue, from the ballpark, racing decides that for the next three years, all the extra money made, 40 million is the estimate, because we're going up from 50 to 90, 
Three years, 120 million. That gets put into Kempton Park, and the problem with the debt is solved. Racing clears the debt, Kempton Park stays, everyone's a winner, and no one really notices the difference for three years because we just stay as the status quo. Why couldn't racing get together as that trust or body and say, OK, we're going to use this levy money for the first three years to save Kempton? I don't think too many people in racing would be impressed if you gave the jockey club £120 million. You're not. You're giving racing. Well, you're giving it to the... You're the one who said that they're £100 million in debt. Yeah, but they're meant to be um, the body that are there for racing. So it's meant... It's sure. different, isn't it? That's, it's not like giving Arena Racing Cup, uh, Company... But don't forget where these debts have come from. They're from building new stands at Cheltenham and so on, which yeah. in mm. the long term will generate profits. I'm just saying, why not use that levy money to save a course that... As far as I'm aware, everyone in racing thinks should be saved. Well, you know, many years ago, when the Levy Board uh, owned the the, th the three London tracks, Epsom, Kempton, and Sandown, they were the ones who actually bought them uh, and then sold them on to the Jockey Club in time. Uh, you know, it's it's happened before, but I think you know we, we've moved a long way away from that kind of scenario now. The Levy Board's going to be wound down anyway, you know, and this new uh, organisation that's going to oversee the spending of the money, you know, I don't think it'll uh, have a remit to. to what is the best thing for the money? <laughs> Who knows, you know, I mean, um, prize money is fundamental, but at the lower level, we were talking before, before the show started, I mean, you know, uh, we're giving too much prize money away uh, on these, on the huge number of poor all-weather flat fixtures, and that's why if we introduced a minimum level uh, below which horses couldn't be entered or couldn't run, that would free up more funds. I, I think it's really important now for racing in Britain to concentrate on trying to increase uh, prize money at the lower end um, of the pyramid because the top end is extremely well catered for with some massive sponsorships as well from uh, you know, the Middle East and uh, people who race here. It's time to, that racing should focus its energy on the, on the bottom of the pyramid. It's, uh, you see, that, that's, that's the sexy thing to say. That's how you... You will be popular on social media for saying that. You'll be saying, great, it doesn't go to the rich people. But is that the real world? I mean, surely there is too much lower end. And in fact, what we actually need to do is cut off some of that lower Agreed, end. Agreed, Matt. By cutting some of it off, you're actually going to free up prize money to give to what's left of the lower end. You know, there's no question about that. Um, and, and you know, because in um, life, how far do you go down? How low do you stoop well, you just to keep things going? Well, that's exactly my point. You know, I think we've gone down the wrong road, and we've been going down the wrong road for many, many years on this. It's time to introduce a standard, and if a horse can't can't meet it, then you know it shouldn't be prize money shouldn't be allocated for such bad horses to be running for. There comes a point where you've got to say, like, if you're a professional, hard, if you're a trainee, any prize money. That's not well, exactly. Really uh, exactly, Chris. It's time to boost but, prize but money. But how at the much of a gain end. are you making if you're not giving these horses their, their pretty poxy payouts? But these I are mean, horses that shouldn't have been bred in the first place. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, yeah, but they're, uh, they're there, aren't they? And you're saying that racing's a major employer and all well, of that. Well, we've been told. You, you, can't, you, can't let model, the, you, know? you can't let the size of the horse population dictate how many fixtures you have. It's the other way around. You set your fixtures. Yeah, but that's exactly you, what you trim a load we've of been told is, is happening, isn't it? Well, I mean, you know, we, maybe it, maybe it's happening now, but but it hasn't happened for but at least been, the last two decades. That has been the ambition. Yeah. But do no, we really yeah, want every right. class six handicap to have another grand put on it and every seller and claimer worth? If there's one class six handicap a week, why not? But if you've got fifteen, then you only they, they can only be worth two grand. You know, Jim, Jim Lona says here, no doubt that in the, the levy. Uh, we'll go to the pockets of the top owners and trainers. No help for the smaller people. But the, the point is, this is a sport. It, it just shouldn't be that you can be really terrible at the sport and expect to get lots of money. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. But you surely got to give owners an opportunity to try and get something back. You know, I mean, like uh, like seventy five percent of the horse Charlie? population is average. You know, is but should I be able to go and buy a horse for a hundred quid out of a field and expect to win ten grand in a seller class twenty eight? But you've got no chance of that happening at the moment. I mean, the, the, find a 10 grand seller. I was being slightly facetious. I know, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's just like there has to... It's, there's too much rubbish. The, there look is at the phrases. We, we have races on a daily basis where you go through the runners and it's a whole row of duck eggs next to every mm. single horse and one of them goes and wins it. But is that really good fun? But people have done the numbers. We've been told for years that we need a big horse population and a big fixture list because it generates 
a yield that yeah. is worthwhile for the industry. But that's not to say... And we're that we, all doubting that. That's, on, what, on that's what, what happens, premise. but that's not to say that that's the right way to go about it, you know? No, but if, if it's more turnover yield, generates it more profit. It is pro providing a service to the But, industry. I mean, if, if we lose sort of, I don't know, say 10% of our betting... Um, you're not, you're yield, not going to save a lot of prize, um, prize money. You can't have it both ways. Say the prize money no, no, is no. too low, but we're going to save all this prize money by getting rid of all this bad racing. Uh, in my opinion, if you cut a load of the of the of the worst fixtures out and concentrated the prize money on uh, what remains, you're probably going to end up better off and able to have more prize money for well, the yeah, lowest tier of racing, even though you're going to lose money. The, uh, the people who've done the numbers are 110 um, million in debt. You know. But you'll still have average horses but, but, doing that, won't you? Even with the but you just wouldn't have so many of them. You know, that, that's the point, Charles. You, you, you know, Matt's saying you're looking at all weather card in the middle of the week and you see horses with no form. Every time one has finished third, maybe the next time it finishes towards the back end because they're so bad they can barely put one foot in front of each other. And why are we financing all of this? You know, obviously, We're you not know, financing it. They are financing the game. Uh, who are? Why is the game financing it? Well, they are producing it? The, the levy. It's the whole point of those fixtures. Um, but maybe if there was better stuff, there'd be more people betting on the better stuff. Like it would be more content. I agree. Maybe that, maybe it wouldn't. The whole, I don't know. But I'm whole, just, yeah. You know. Uh, I mean, why not have class twenty then on that theory? Just let any horse run, however bad it is. Well, why don't we have doing. races for donkeys yeah. and halfbreds and Just race cart anything horses, you know? if it produces uh, levy. If someone will bet on not? it, cartoon racing put levy on that as well. Anything well, you like. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's just how, how low do you stoop? You know, there's the Premier League, there's the Championship, yeah, there's and League 1, 2, there's not League 3, well, there is. There but, is, though, but, there's, there's, there's loads. But not there. financed, Charlie. No, but in, in, indeed, and it's not, not sustainably financed at that level, as everyone agrees. So if you are trainer 712 in the country, you're going to be struggling. And that's because there are too many trainers, there are too many jockeys, probably there are... It, that is, and that the only way you're going to keep that under control is by by exactly that cruel margin. But that's only because of the route we've gone down over so many years now that we've 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 got ourselves into a world of mediocrity. That's what we're in. We've got too many group races. We've got too many low-grade listed races. We've got too many poor handicaps. Too many. Set. We've just got mm. mediocrity that, that, across that, the board. That, that is a broader point. And, and a, a valid one. one. And a good one. Uh, I, think, uh, I think there's a lot in that. But I, I, I think you need to demonstrate that it's not performing a worthwhile job. To, to me. People whose job it is to calculate what kind of. But who, who is calculating produce? this, Chris? It's the bookmakers who are doing it. No, it's bit, and they want more and more racing because yeah, they make more the, money. The more money uh, they make, the more money racing makes. But, that, yeah, but that, that, that's just an argument which control, racing needs to get away from. It is not all no, about how much money you make from betting racing. The, the, you know, the, if, if you want to run the sport. If you're celebrating, you're going to get 10% of their profits. How are we going to get away from trying to provide their profits? We have made this pact with the devil. And, and would, would it make a lot of difference if we, if we got 40 million rather than 45 million from them? You know? Um, you know I, I don't see that. I, I think we could... Sorry, we could try and say? If we make less money from betting, then we would be getting, I'm just saying, 40 million rather than the extra 45 million from this levy. I mean, how much difference really is that going to make? If you actually sliced off the bottom sort of 10% of... of all the all-weather stuff that You've we're seeing. You've lost five million. What have you gained under that scenario? You, 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 you're not because you're talking only about racing being a uh, seen as a generator of profit through betting. And I'm Low saying, level racing. yeah, I'm saying there are much more laudable uh, causes, and there are much better ways, in my opinion, for the sport to to proceed down a certain road of, and, and it, it it isn't putting profit from betting as the god of gods. Uh, I wouldn't start Gary, from. I Gary start says, from I disagree that. with cutting off the bottom end racing. Uh, racing needs new owners to survive, otherwise, only the rich will survive. Wrong! Because we're not talking about just running grade one races for the rest of our lives. And, and Emerald Tippy, again, just completely doesn't get it. Sounds like Chapman just wants a load of Duvans of racing. True fans love going to Kilbegan for a 0 to 90 handicap. Why not go to a 0 to 100 handicap? That's all we're saying. It's like, and why do you enjoy going to watch a handicap? where you've got no evidence of what the outcome will be and you'll go with a group of lads or girls or whatever it is and you, one of you will find the winner 
by no skill whatsoever. But I mean, we have why is that done fun? That. But we have done, as in, in England, the jump, the jump race. Of course, it's now. not fun, Christopher. Of course, it's fun for, for the, the kind of people you're sorry, Charlie. Yeah, for well, the kind of people you're talking about. Well, not for someone who's got a Twitter but address to be able to tip As in, fun. the minimum grade of jump racing now is 0 to 100. As in, we've cut out 0 to 85, 0 to 90, 0 to 95 since yeah. I've been riding. It's made no difference. Yeah, I think that this actually is more about flat racing than jump racing. Yes, it is. It's about I yeah, all other racing in particular. But I mean, a condensed fisherless probably makes because I think a low-grade jumps race has a lot of enjoyment in it, sure. whereas a low-grade flat race has but absolutely zero Going enjoyment. back to the prize money, then, there's still a big... I mean, like, we had grade ones at Sandown and Newbury, and the, the Tolworth and the Chalo, both run for a little over 20,000 quid yeah, to the winner. because we've got too many of them. But too many of what? Too many graded races. So many graded, graded races in the grade season. Ones, like, and, and, you're, you're and there are too many of them. Grand. Too many of them. They how, shouldn't how, be there. How, what, we don't need them. We, we do need them. You don't. And, and also, I didn't understand the breeding argument as well. I mean, they were talking about black type in a programme book. I mean, these are gelded horses. I mean, I don't know quite what the black type in a programme book thing but has. But let's look at it argument. another way. Uh, you know, program across book, the country, there are, there are huge numbers of teenagers who are trying to become professional footballers. And then they get to sort of 16, 17, and, and a decision is made as to whether they're actually going to make the grade or not. And if they don't, they fall out the... the they basically fall out of the game and have to do something else for a living. What racing is basically doing is saying there are X hundred thousand number of teenage um, or, or, or horses running around and we have to finance, we have to give opportunities to all of them. So the sport is being dictated to by the number of horses that people are breeding because we have to give owners and trainers the opportunity to run them and I'm saying that's wrong. That, that's the wrong way to come at it. But that's not why in football, not if you don't make it, you go and find another job. In racing, well, no, you can't let the number of horses being bred dictate how many races you put on for them. That's you say, not, this is, this is the model. Happened. I'm afraid it is, Chris. They, I'm afraid it is. The, the fixture list was expanded specifically to, to generate greater bet, um, betting But if you expand the, the fixture yield. list, then more horses are bred. Yeah. And you can't breed more but good it, horses, you're you just, just breeding rubbish. the list was expanded uh, to accommodate these extra horses. That's not how it's worked. Uh, what happens is if you don't have enough fixtures for the horse population, everybody is up in arms about it. What should have happened was that the breeders looked, or, or, or owners when they went to the sales to buy horses, or whether, whether, when they wanted to get involved in racehorse ownership in the first place, should say, well, there isn't really that much opportunity, I'm out. But once they come in, it seems as if we have to give them an opportunity to run, even if it's for like a thousand pounds. It's not why the racing's been put on, because of follow over production. Charlie, should we come it back? May and, <laughs> should we come back and turn that We're going to go to drink. Have a go, go, yeah. go and have a coffee. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Matt, you wanted an enlivened yeah. levy stroke. No, I love it. I, but I'm happy for you, you to know, just uh, to carry on. It's fantastic <laughs> telly, and I love it. And the fact, the looks of McGrath's giving you is fantastic. <laughs> but can we, can we come back later? By all means, join in now. Yeah. Uh, I think do, the football do, model's an interesting one, though, Because, yeah. I mean, now, well, basically, all, all the big clubs have all the young talent. They farm them out and loan them out to, mm. to filter down the system, so... No, but my point was that if you don't make the grade when you're 17 or 18, you, you don't expect football to give you a living. You don't get paid to play football because the clubs don't want you and you have to go and do something else. But we yeah. should As a racehorse, things, if, if, you can't, if you can't achieve a certain rating, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to enter. But if, you're, you're, if you're a lesser talent you're you're not good enough. clubs, you then drift down the system until you find your level. And you but eventually you get to the money. point where there was, there's nowhere left for you but to go, Charlie. That's what we've been mm. saying. And you, you have to you basically have to go and do a tradesman's job or something else instead. You have to do another job. You drift down the system and then you drift out of it. But there is no bottom. You can run a horse that's rated four. A zero. You know, but you can't. There are two yeah. horses yeah. in training rate zero. I had exactly. one exactly. the other day. Yeah, but you can't win, and, and you're still, and, and eventually you'll give up on it, won't you? Yes. Well, it doesn't seem as if owners do, do they? You know, they keep going with horses that are palpably. But then they are know, paying a lot of money for someone to train it for but, them. But why maybe not, you're just why getting not, free tickets. Why not? Because if you maybe horse, you've got no go. training fees um, and you're quite happy just to, to tickle along, get your free entry. You've no training fees. Well, it depends what system you're under, Charlie. You think everyone pays twenty-five grand a year? I don't know, maybe not 25 grand a year, but no. I'd like to find the person that doesn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. All Matt's horses are trained like that, by the way, Charlie. You know? No, but I, I, look, I, yeah. I, it was a good debate, and I wish we could have just let you have more time, but there are other topics, and the show is nearly over. Um,